All right, we're live. Sorry, a couple of minutes late. I forgot to hit the live button. But anyway, today we are in today's Living in Costa Rica live broadcast. We are talking about uh, getting sick in Costa Rica, Costa Rica's health plan. I mean, is it good, bad, ugly? Uh, and you know what? I'm going to share some common sicknesses. Look, sicknesses that no doubt you are eventually going to get. And look, some life-threatening illnesses that I hope you never get, but life-threatening illnesses that are common in Costa Rica. One that I have actually had in the past, okay? But what's even scarier is that Costa Rica is fifth in Latin America with the highest incident rate of this one particular life-threatening illness that I'm going to share with you about, okay? Now, remember, I am sharing from my experience, uh, my perspective of being in Costa Rica since November of 2013. Costa Rica is an amazing, amazing place. Nothing really to be scared of. You just need to know about these things. And by knowing about these things, you can take precautions, a little bit of common sense. You've got nothing to worry about. But if you are serious, serious about coming to Costa Rica, well, the most important thing you can do is to actually attend one of our Costa Rica relocation events. And look, the next one is right around the corner. So make sure that you check the link in the description so that you can reserve your spot because rooms are going fast. But before we get started, hey, Give me a 10 in the chat box real quick. Give me a 10. Let me know. Is the audio okay? 10. Is the video okay? 10. Let me know if everything is looking good on your end, okay? So I'm getting some comments, you know, things like, hey, Michael and Rhonda, welcome. Dale, Rhonda, uh, Dale, welcome. Glad everybody's here. I think there's quite a few people on the on, here already today, so I'm so glad that you're here. So make sure to hit that like button, okay? That way the algorithm will uh, push it out there. And if you haven't already subscribed, subscribe, okay? And look, grab your apple juice. And I got my virtual background on. Sometimes that thing's good, sometimes it's not. But anyway, it's better than that old bland wall that I got behind me. All right. So let's get in, in it. Okay. Hey, uh, don't send flowers to my room. Don't send food to my room. Just send money, 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 money. <laughs> Got to pay the hospital bill. No, I'm teasing. I, I, I do have the what's commonly called the grippa or the grippe, okay? Uh, but I'm not done anytime soon. But let's get into it. The first thing, and it's something that's very, very common in Costa Rica. And hey, if I'm pronouncing it right, the locals call it grippa or grippe. From my understanding, it's called both. One is worse than the other. Grippa is not so bad and grippe is worse. But then they have, you know, it gets even worse and it translates to bone breaker or bone crusher. And it's where you, you are hurting all over. You got body aches all over. I can't remember the actual Spanish word for it, but that's it translates to bone crusher, which doesn't make a whole lot of sense to us. But anyway, the, the body aches, you feel so bad. It's really um, supposedly like the common cold. And look, I, I'm a pretty healthy guy. So me sharing with you is probably not real good because I don't get sick that often. But I remember coming to Costa Rica you know, stinking nine years ago. And look, I was here only a couple of weeks and I got the grippa and the grippa didn't feel like no common cold to me because I had this thing for like three weeks, you know, and it really starts off with a, a, a sore throat. And look, so I'm going to tell you what you need to do. OK, but so that you can understand in case you haven't got it yet, let me explain to you the symptoms here because it just creeps on you. And it look, it starts off with a sore throat. Just a couple of days ago, uh, I, I mean, I'm always healthy. Got this sore throat and I immediately ran to the store to get the remedy that I'm gonna share with you. But what happens is if you don't treat it, you'll end up with this sore throat for 
several days, if not the whole time. And then that sore throat goes from going away to you start coughing and then sneezing and coughing and sneezing. And, and you just, you're just drained of energy. It's terrible. Okay. So it's worse than any cold that I've ever had in the United States, but commonly called the grippa. And what you need to do is I immediately ran to the store and I buy some fresh honey. Okay. Get you some honey, get you some lemons and get you some ginger. Now, what I do is I take, and all you need is those three things, and you're going to make a tea out of it. So you, you take your ginger, and you can buy that ginger almost at any produce stand, and I will grate that ginger up. And so I grate it, grate it, grate it. It comes in little tiny pieces, and I wish I had some, but I gave it to my neighbor who gave me the grippa. So we trade it. She gives me grippa. I give her my remedy. Anyway, <laughs> anyway. So I take and I grind that, that uh, I grate up all of that ginger into little bitty pieces. And what I do is I get a container and I'll take and I'll fill the bottom of the container with a little bit of honey. And then I take and I sprinkle all that, I sprinkle some of that ginger in there. I take that, that lemon and I'll slice that lemon up in slices and I'll put a couple of slices there and then I'll coat it with uh, honey. Then I'll take and put some more ginger in there, a couple more slices and I'll coat it with honey. And I'll do that until that container's full. Now, what's really neat about this is, you know, I live in the mountains and you never know when this is gonna come on you. And I don't wanna have to travel two hours to go get any of this stuff. So I just pull it out of the freezer. I pull it out of the freezer, let that thaw. And then all I have to do is, you know, once I've made that container, I'll actually take several lemons and squeeze the juice into that container, but it's coated with a lot of honey and that honey will preserve it. It will stay good on your counter for over a week, okay? But I take this stuff, and what I'll do is I'll take a couple of little spoons, put it in my coffee cup along with a piece of that lemon, and, and then I'll take and put a teaspoon of honey in there. And I'll boil me some hot water, or I'll take and put a cup in the microwave, super hot water, and then I'll just let that make a tea. <clears throat> and I'll let it sit there for about 10 minutes. And then I'll sip on it. And I'll sip on it with all of those ginger pieces in there. And, you know, I'll sip on it. It's good and hot. It makes a really good soothing tea. It's a very natural remedy. And it's extremely good. And, and look, everybody that I know has gotten the grippa, okay? So it's a very good uh, remedy. Now, one other thing that you can do to boost your recovery is I immediately went and got those three ingredients, okay? Honey lemons and uh ginger but i also buy a little bottle of listerine okay you may already have some listerine but what i always do is as soon as i feel that sore throat i immediately start gargling as deep as i possibly can with that listerine because listerine kills germs so i gargle with that stuff and i'll gargle with it several times during the day and i'll drink that tea all day long and look within about 24 hours my sore throat was gone Okay, gone. That's how fast that stuff works. And then it immediately turns it into a, a little cough. And uh, and so, but hey, look, I've only had this about three days and it's just about gone. And so now, you know, I'll only have to suffer about three days, three or four days instead of two or three weeks. So, hey, write that down if you haven't already done so. Make sure that you get you some ginger, some honey and some lemon. And you can go ahead and thank me now. You can do that by sending money to the money box. <laughs> okay, I'm teasing. Anyway, so that stuff is really great, but a lot of people will get this gripper, and it's very, very common, okay? Now, hey, some other things that are common, of course, are mosquito bites. A lot of people are worried about malaria, but you know what? Uh, I, I haven't really heard any problems with malaria but I am going to tell you about some problems with the mosquitoes. Now, with mosquitoes, the things that you do need to know, you know, I lived in Louisiana. It's in the swamps. And mosquitoes were bad there, bad every single day. You know, uh, in the afternoons, when I'd go for a little walk, uh, mosquitoes would tear you up so you couldn't even enjoy an afternoon walk. Well, I've never had any problems with mosquitoes. And all of the places that I've traveled in Costa Rica – with the exception, anytime I was near the beach, I was house sitting one place right on the beach. I'm talking about the beach was less than 50 yards from the back door. But 
the owners of that house had lots of flowers, you know, from the back of the house to the beach. And so, I mean, the whole backyard, just beautiful flowers. However, the mosquitoes loved all of those beautiful flowers. And I literally would walk out the back door, grab my surfboard, and I'd make a hundred yard dash to the water because the mosquitoes would eat me alive in that short distance between the back door and that beach. So the only places I had serious problems with mosquitoes was on the beach there. And one other place whenever I was on uh, the Caribbean side, but I'm, I'll share that in just a moment, okay? So, uh, but of course now we live, uh, you know, I've lived mostly in the mountains and where I'm at in the mountains now, it's very remote, but I seldom ever, I mean, they might have one or two mosquitoes, but it only takes one mosquito to, to kind of ruin your day. But hey, don't take long to kill one mosquito. So mosquitoes uh, are just not nearly a problem. But of course, hey, a little bit of off, uh, a little bit of repellent fixes that. Now, spider bites, pretty common, okay? Uh, Costa Rica is a land full of bugs. And look, it, I don't, is every single house I've been into. Now, I've lived in mostly Tico houses and the Tico houses full of termites, full of ants, full of bugs, okay? In the houses I've house sat in, these were gringo houses. They're typically made and built better, but every one of them, if a if you drop a grain of sugar, you know, we often hear that dogs have the best nose in the world. No, 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 no. Ants. Ants can smell sugar a mile away. You drop a little bit of sugar on the table, you leave a breadcrumb, and I'm telling you, the house won't be any bugs in it until you leave some food on the counter and ants will come out of the woodwork. So if you live in Costa Rica, it's just important to constantly be cleaning your counters and don't ever leave anything there because it's you're going to get uh, the, the bugs will come out of the woodwork. OK, so it, it's just common. Now, uh, where I live in the you know, I, I never really had a lot of problem with spider bites, I think, until I got to the uh, the mountain where I'm at. But you got to keep in mind, I am living outdoors underneath a barn while I'm building my house. And so I've had several bites. I had spider bite on the back of my head. I've had them on my arms. And when, when you get a spider bite, I never feel it. And, uh, but it always will always swell up and it looks kind of like a zit and, uh, you know, like a pimple. And of course, as kids, you're trained to stink and squeeze that crazy thing. I don't know why, but it looks like a zit. I normally just pop the head off. I've learned not to do that because as soon as I pop the head off of that spider bite, then it immediately starts swelling up and it gets infected. And then, and, and then I'll have a problem for about two weeks and it just gets nasty. Uh, but what I've learned is that I can actually go in. And this is one of the good things about Costa Rica's medical health care. Uh, Costa Rica's just, you know, I can go to almost any pharmacy, okay? And if I go into the pharmacy, I can show them this bite and they'll immediately get whatever I need right off the counter without a prescription, without anything. Tell me this is what you need. And, you know, they'll give me antibiotics and whatever I need. And if I will get that when that spider bite shows up, it will get rid of it really quick. What I have learned, though, is when now when I get a spider bite and I get that little spot that looks like a zit, I just don't mash it. I just leave it alone and it will swell up a little bit. But if I leave it alone and don't touch it, it eventually will wash off in the shower, you know, and it won't swell up and won't get all nasty as typical. So it's just something for you to know about. If you get a spider bite, it looks like a zit. Don't mash it. Just leave it alone. Maybe put some trop topical salve on it, but just leave it alone. OK, um, scorpions. Scorpions are pretty popular, especially in some, I would say, hot areas. But it's usually these small scorpions, not these big old ugly, scary scorpions you see in the movies, but scorpions. And, and they don't bite, but they do sting. But it's not dangerous at all. Uh, I've never been stung by one. Uh, Rebecca has been stung by one. She said it kind of felt like a wasp sting and only hurt for a little while. So anyway, snakes are another common thing. But I think a lot of... hype as far as the snakes go. Not a lot of problems with 
with snakes, okay? So anyway, uh, I think using some good common sense because I am in the jungle all the time. And I've only seen a handful of snakes as many times as I've been in the jungle. And a lot of times I'm not even on trails, okay? So, hey, uh, while there are some, you know, while there have been people that's been been bitten by the, the dreaded fear de lance snake, you know, uh, I think there's a lot of hype. If you're just using some good common sense, staying on the trails, you're not going to have to worry about a snake bite, okay? So just use some good common sense. Now, let me tell you about the life-threatening disease, okay, uh, that I've actually had. Okay, and, and look, put your comments in there. I'm seeing some comments. I'm going to address all of these comments in a moment. But now, this life-threatening disease is called Papa Lamoya. Okay, Papa Lamoya. And where does this Papa Lamoya come from? Well, it's a disease that's caused by a parasite and it's transmitted to people through the bite of a mosquito. Okay, now, years ago, Papa Lamoya was bad kind of all over from what I've been told. However, now, Papa Lamoya or these mosquitoes that transmit this Papa Lamoya are right now are only bad on the Caribbean side. So when I was living on the Caribbean side for almost a year, uh, man, the mosquitoes. And of course, I was living in a house uh, that didn't have screens on it. And uh, the, anyway, you open up the windows and look, we were practically living under mosquito nets. The mosquitoes were so bad there, okay? And we weren't even close to the beach. We had a great view of the beach, a great view of the ocean. Uh, but look, the mosquitoes were so bad right there. And uh, look, we got eat up by the mosquitoes, you know, when we weren't in the tent, in the, in the mosquito nets. And I ended up with three bites. Now, fortunately, Rebecca didn't get any bites. I got three bites. I had two on one arm and uh, one on the other arm. And uh, it, it, it starts off as a regular mosquito bite. And it starts turning into this nasty sore that will eventually get a little bigger, a little bigger. And uh, mine got to be about the size of a dime. And uh, I mean, no matter what I did, it just didn't seem like it was getting any better. Now, <clears throat> here's what is interesting, okay? It's very, very popular on the Caribbean side. A lot of people get this. Now, I found out about this doing all of this research, going to the doctors, but I had just gotten these bites. We ended up going home for the holidays or something like that. And since I'm a veteran, I went into the veteran's office. I had them look at it. And of course, that's not something they're familiar with in the United States. And the doctor looked at it and says, oh, you got a staph infection. I'm like, dude, that ain't no staph infection. I know it ain't no staph infection. And staph infection is something that, from my, my understanding, is something that's very common when you're around or in hospitals a lot or old people. I'm not 100% sure I'm not a doctor, but I knew it wasn't staph infection. So I didn't take what he gave me. And when I got back to Costa Rica, well, I went into the clinic. I showed it to the doctor and he immediately said, that's Papa Lamoya. And uh, he immediately told me what I had to do. And I ended up having to go into the clinic every day for the next, it was either 45 or 60 days. And typically, I think you're normally in there 30 to 45 days, but I had three big bites. The sores were big. So I had to go into the clinic every single day and every single day, uh, you know, I had to pay some money. And it was about 15,000 cloners every day. And they would give me two shots, one in each butt cheek. And it was a very painful shot. And uh, my butt swole up to be, I had a big, big butt. Man, I'm, I'm telling you, it, it was, it, I felt like I was taking radiation to kill this papillomoia. And this is a, a parasite, which is a blood-borne parasite, and it will just eat at your skin. Now, here's some things that you need to know about papillomoia, okay? This is how life-threatening it is. Left untreated, left untreated, it's fatal in more than 95% of the cases. Death usually occurs within a two-year period, okay? And however, they do have some new medication that is for oral use, 
and you can ingest it twice a day for 28 days, and it has shown some results, but it probably is not available in Costa Rica, okay? When I, when I had it a, a few years ago, I had to go to the clinic every day, and they gave me two shots, one in each butt cheek, and I had to do that for about, it was, I think it was 45 days, and, it, and it, while it was getting better, uh, I had to go for another 15 days until it was all cleared up, and uh, it was just really, really painful, and you just felt like you had zero energy during that whole time, okay? But, you know, uh, this is a bloodborne just uh, thing that just is, it's eating you alive, and if it's untreated, yeah, those sores will eventually clear up, but what's happening is it will attack your liver, your kidneys, it'll attack your organs, and it will kill you from the inside out. So this is something not to take lightly. And it is very, very common on the uh, Caribbean side. I saw lots of people that had these scars that I immediately recognized from Papa Lamoya. And anyway, talking to the doctors, you know, I found out about it. Matter of fact, at the time I had a Tico full-time working for me. And when we went over to the United States, he came over to house it, the house that we were house sitting because we couldn't leave it vacant. And he ended up getting Papa Lamoya and he went back home to the Pacific side. And, uh, you know, for a long time, he didn't go see a doctor. He finally went to the doctor, you know, but he had to tell them that it was Papa Lamoya because they didn't recognize it. And he had to tell them that he was on the Caribbean side had, you know, and he got bit by mosquitoes and that, you know, he had a friend and he went to the doctor, had Papa Lamoya. And so after telling them what it was, then they diagnosed him and took care of him. So my, my point is, you know, it's, it's something that is not popular on the Pacific side. And I know the majority of the people on our channel, <coughs> excuse me, majority of the people I think are on the Pacific side, but a lot of people do go the Caribbean side. So it's just a word of warning, precaution, so that you don't have to have that issue, okay? So Papa Lamoya, uh, and uh, that's a hard word to spell. I should probably put it in a chat box in case you want to uh, do a little more research. So I'm going to put that in the chat, okay? So I put that in there in case you want to know how to spell that. Now, let's talk about if you need an ambulance okay now thank goodness like i said i'm a healthy guy never needed an ambulance but i know an old guy that uh he had a heart attack of course i don't think he knew he had a heart attack at the time and uh they called and, and had an ambulance come he was way way up in the mountains ambulance finally shows up and hey look this is just costa rica mentality this is the Pura Vida mentality. You see it on TV. Costa Rica, the ambulance shows up. Paramedics are there. They got a stretcher and they're coming to see you. They're picking you up. They're bringing it. Well, no, that did not. That does not happen in Costa Rica or it didn't happen in this incident. The paramedics showed up. They could not drive all the way there. Okay. They had to hike in the last mile. They didn't bring a stretcher. They didn't bring a box full of medications or anything. They just doo -doo, doo -doo, doo -doo, doo -doo, walked on in, even though they were told that there was an emergency. They were told that this guy laid out on the floor, possible heart attack. Well, they showed up, no stretcher, no medical kits, nothing. And they go examine him. And so they're like, okay, let's go to the ambulance. And this old guy, after having a heart attack, of course, we know now, walked a mile up and down the hills to get into the ambulance, okay? True story. I know you, cannot, you can't believe this. True story. Now, it got even worse because the ambulance gets down the mountain. It's two hours down the mountain. And they got hungry. So what did they do? They pulled over. Wait a minute. They got a man who had a heart attack in the ambulance, laying in the back of the ambulance, they get hungry, they pull over. <laughs> they pull over to eat lunch while the guy's laying back there. So he gets out, 
and gets lunch too. So they're like, hey, we know you're about to die. We're not worried about it. Let's have lunch. <laughs> no, why? I'm telling you, I am blown away. But that is the Purta Vida mentality. He finally gets to the hospital. And when they get to the hospital, that hospital couldn't take care of him. And they had to transfer him to a bigger hospital down the road. And so, because uh, it was a little hospital in Buenos Aires, had to transfer him to San Isidro Hospital where they could take care of him. And he was there uh, in a, and that's what's crazy is, look, the hospitals in Costa Rica are nothing like what you might be used to in the United States. He, it was really like this great big, huge dormitory room that had about 10 or 15 beds in it with people walking all over the place. The lights were never off. And he said he could never get any sleep. And I would go visit the old guy and bring him food and stuff. And I, I remember I brought him some fruit and stuff. And one of the guys on the other bed comes up and says, hey, can I have that banana? <laughs> I'm, I'm serious. Unbelievable. The, the stuff that happens in Costa Rica. So, uh, you know, uh, now keep in mind, you know, you the, they have the free health care, which is not free. You pay the Caja, okay? And the Caja is the insurance, okay? And your Caja, how much you pay depends on how much you declare for your income and your residency status. Those people who have the retirement residency, they pay the cheapest Caja, you know, depending on the how much, because, you know, as long as you get a $1,000 check. So if you're only declaring $1,000, then your car has a lot cheap is a lot cheaper. But my understanding is, look, you know, when it comes time for your residence and stuff, you have a meeting with the, the, the health officials and they determine during that meeting, determine based on your conversation and your answers, how much your health care is going to be. So your health care could be kind of expensive and it's going to range in a different percentage, anywhere from 5% of your declared value to maybe 15 or 20 percent of your declared income. So it's important that you understand that uh, because your Caja pays for your, your medical. Now, do you want to go into the public free health care? Is it all that great? In my experience, it wasn't that great. I was there in a very long line. And of course, now I don't pay Caja. So keep in mind, I, I went there and I had to always go and pay for my services before they saw me. If I didn't pay for my services, they weren't going to treat me. So, you know, and it was a very long line and, and it's not friendly services. It didn't even seem like it was very clean. Okay. But I have gone into the private healthcare and, uh, you know, we've done private healthcare way cleaner, way nicer, way more friendly, but it, it's going to cost you, but it does, but it's not crazy, crazy high. So we've had minor surgeries and minor things done in Costa Rica. And so as far as the private health care in Costa Rica, I think it's top notch. Very good. Uh, would I want to go into the free uh, public health care? No, I've done it. But no, it's not a good experience. So, you know, those are some things that you do need to know about. So, hey, getting sick in Costa Rica is not a terrible thing. There's clinics everywhere and you can go into a clinic and, and they also have emergency rooms that you can go into. OK, uh, but keep in mind, it, you know, it is not going to be anything like you are going to experience in the United States. So let me take a moment to take a look at some of our questions here and answer any questions that we might have on this topic, okay? So anyway, it is it is mind-blowing to me, and it is really just uh, quite amazing, okay? So, uh, hey, Dale says it's going to be there in, again in two weeks. Wow. Hey, Jan, uh, Jennifer. Okay, uh, now, now Michael and Rhonda says they, let me put that up here, okay? They say they have been having a difficult time lately getting antibiotics, so that kind of seems strange, Um uh, and they were almost, uh, they said they used to get almost anything they needed when they first arrived in 2021. Now, I haven't had to go to the pharmacies and get anything lately, you know, other than, uh, 
you know, minor, minor stuff. And I'm glad that you brought that up because, you know, like I said, you could go to the pharmacy and uh, get almost anything you want. You can show them a picture. Uh, matter of fact, you know, I have noticed this is very typical of a lot of men. And uh, hey, you let me know if you're not scared to admit it. For whatever reason, a lot of men on their big toe will have toe fungus, okay? Uh, I just have noticed that with a lot of men. Well, I had the same thing too. Been having it for 20 years and I've tried occasionally to do something about it. Well, finally decided to do something and I've been to the, uh, all I had to do is take a picture and show it to the pharmacy and they would give me this and that. And so over the course of the last several years, I've had several different things and never did I have to go to a doctor to have a doctor look at it and pay that added expense. It didn't have to. Show a picture to the pharmacist. And the pharmacist, pharmacist would give me whatever I needed. And I've tried two or three different things. The majority of the time, they've always given me the same. But a couple of months ago, a doctor gave me something that was totally different. It was kind of like a nail polish that you just polish on your toe. And that one has actually worked really well. And my toenail is almost back to normal. So Hey, anyway, that is funny. Uh, hey, Michael and Rhonda says that they just had, uh, I guess it's one of the snakes. They said Trichopola. I don't know what that is. That must be a, anyway, I believe it's a snake. Kill one of their cats. Wow, that ain't good. But hey, snakes can be a bad, bad thing. So. And of course, you know, like, you know, uh, my, the, what uh, Michael and them saying, of course, hey, I'm sharing my perspective. And they live here in the, uh, I think they said they live in the Mary Valles area. So they live in an area. And of course, they're just sharing, <coughs> they're sharing, you know, their experience, what perspective they've had. So um, <laughs> she's like, well, hey, anybody's going to have a deadly snake in her house. It's us. And so anyway. And, and they also put in a, they, she had a heart attack back in June. She went to the hospital in San Carlos and uh, very literally nearly killed her. And uh, anyway, uh, she's got a video on her channel if you want to go and check that out, okay? But she talks about how the staff was ignoring him. Uh, and uh, so anyway, while she was trying to tell him, she still had chest pain. So, hey, obviously Rhonda can attest to, you know, the, the level of, service that you're going to get in Costa Rica is nothing going to be like in the United States. Okay. Uh, you know, it, it is just amazing to me, you know, in the United States, if any ambulance would have stopped and, uh, stopped on the side of the road and said, let's have lunch, the lawsuit would be astronomical, but you know, that's one of the good and bad things about Costa Rica is that, Hey, you can, you can forget having a lawsuit. While there are some people that will put out what's called a denuncia, that's the word for a lawsuit here, these things can be tied up in court forever. And, and most of the time, you'll never hear anything about it when someone puts a denuncia out on you or whatever. So, you know, that's a good thing. So, hey, if you die in a Costa Rican hospital, you can forget ever having any kind of lawsuit. It just ain't going to happen, okay? So, uh, hey, Rhonda says that she sat in an emergency room for about 10 hours, uh, and she literally could have died in there. It, it, and, and unfortunately, and, and hey, Rhonda, let me know in the chat box. I'm sure that was probably the, the free public health care, or did you go to a private, uh, was this experience in a private clinic, okay? But I'm sure it was probably in the free health care. Oh, no, no, no. This is interesting because she says she ended up walking out of the hospital and taking herself to Hospital Mexico where she got excellent care. Now, Hospital Mexico, where was that? Is Hospital Mexico in Costa Rica or did you have to go to Mexico to get that health care? I'd be interested to know. So, you know, it is totally, totally different here. And, you know, one of the big questions is uh, a lot of people wonder, well, what about health insurance? And from my understanding, almost every place, no place takes health insurance. 
and, and not any kind of health insurance from the United States. Uh, they have a couple of places that have some sort of special thing. And there's a couple of places that say, oh, you can you can use your health insurance at such and such. But from 99 percent of the time when I've talked to different doctors, there are some say that, hey, we'll we'll take it. But you're going to pay first and you can fill out all of the health documents, your, your health insurance yourself. You know, they're not going to fill out anything for you. OK, but they might help you give you the information you need for you to fill out all the insurance claims and you can submit that on your own. OK, so, you know, hopefully that might help you if you need to know that information. OK, so it is definitely a um, anyway, uh, you know, it is di definitely different. OK. And please, hey, look, um, while we're here, let me let me throw this up here. Please don't forget to like. Uh, here we go. There you go. Make sure to comment, like, share this video while we're here. And look, don't forget. I want to take a moment to remind you. And, and look, hey, I want to ask uh, how many people are going to attend. If you know you're attending the next live event in January, love to have you come spend a week with me in Estorios, Costa Rica. So, hey, if you know or you're thinking about going to uh, the live event, hey, put a put a seven in the chat box so I know if you're thinking or you already know you're going. If you know you're going, hey, put an eight in the chat box if you know you're going. But if you're thinking about going, put a seven in the chat box, okay? I'd love to know if you're going to be joining me for the next event. Uh, Dale says that, uh, of course, now Dale says, Google says that in San Jose, uh, is run by the Social Security Fund. Now, of course, now, what you're probably finding there, Dale, is that, you know, Google tells you a lot of stuff and you can get a lot of misinformation. But um, when it says it's run by the Social Security Fund, they are talking about the Costa Rica's CAHA system, okay? They have they have something that's called their Social Security, but it's their, it's their CAHA, okay? Uh, so I don't think it's the same thing as what you might be thinking, you know, because uh, in the United States, you know, <coughs> our Social Security is different than what they call their Social Security thing in Costa Rica. It's two different things. And I might be completely wrong on what you put uh, inside the chat, OK, but I'm guessing by the limited information that you shared there. OK. All right. So what other questions do we have? And uh, but that gives you a lot of the anyway. You know, what I've shared today is based on my experience uh, and firsthand knowledge of actual experience in Costa Rica. Um, I, I definitely would not want to be in a hospital in Costa Rica. It is totally, totally different. So if I have the finances and if I have the money, I'm definitely going to pay for private care because the private care that that we've had in the past was top notch. It was far better. And, uh, and the, the, the free health care was not fun at all, okay? Was not enjoyable at all. I would not want to do that again. But hey, if you ain't got money, you ain't got money. And if you want to use your Kaha money, then you can, okay? Oh, and, and, uh, and, and I think Dale clarified. He says, no, he meant that it sounds like Kaha is as Rhonda says. Yeah. You know, it's the Kaha that uh, takes care of. So, hey, look, as far as if you got medical issues and you want to use Kaha, that is cheap health insurance. However, I have heard of a lot of people that needed serious medical attention or serious surgery. And from talking to the locals, the locals have told me that they put them on a waiting list for this surgery and they could be dead before they ever get to the top of the list for that particular medical surgery. So from my understanding, that's the way it is in most countries where they have, you know, supposed uh, free medical. So it's just part of having free medical. So anyway, just something that you need to be aware of, okay? All right, so uh, what else do we have? Hey, look, and it's, it's good to know because uh, Arena, who's going to have dancing lessons with me from our last live, says that Canada is the same thing, has the exact same issue. So 
uh, yeah, you know, from my understanding, any kind of free public health care, it's not the greatest thing in the world, okay? But hey, it's just part of, of you know, you just have to understand. I love being in Costa Rica. Uh, I love living in the mountains. But you know what? There's a lot of things I don't like. But that's true for any country that you go to. Now, we're going to be talking about a lot of this kind of stuff in our next uh, live Costa Rica uh, relocation event that's happening in January. So you're going to learn way more stuff and you're going to learn stuff that is that is updated because, you know, you can do a lot, a lot, a lot of research on the Internet. And unfortunately, uh, you can find a lot of outdated. You can find a lot of bad information because, unfortunately, you got YouTubers that go to Costa Rica for two weeks and they think that they're the expert and they're and they're making videos and crap uh, just for views. OK, they're doing it just for the views, just to see how many views they can get and how much money they can make off of YouTube. And of course, hey, I don't do this for the money. Because you don't make anything. You make hardly nothing. I do it just to share my perspective, my experience, because I love being in Costa Rica, okay? And I just love to help people. So I do this just out, out of the fun that I have. <coughs> you know, I think one of the best home remedies is to make sure that you have apple juice handy. Apple juice has always worked wonders for me. It takes the pain right away. So put that on your uh, natural remedies list. Hey, hey, you, hey, hey, you put a, 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 a you put a one in the chat box if apple juice is on your remedy package. <laughs> it works for me. So. And, and, you know, this is a, a good point that uh, Michael and Rhonda bring up, you know, uh, she says, just know that if it's an emergency, you are in no shape to demand a private hospital. And they're going to just take you to one of their public hospital where the staff takes lunch while their patients are dying. And that is absolutely true. Uh, look, it is the Purta Vita mentality. Look, it's like, dude, I'm sick. Purta Vita. Dude, I need some help. Purta Vita. I'm telling you, it's the Purta Vita mentality. And uh, that's one word that I have come to hate because uh, it's the culture. They just... It, Pura Vida, man. Pura Vida, man. So, hey, I, I love Costa Rica, but that is just part of it, okay? It's just part of it. Um, hey, well, uh, uh, that's awesome to know. So, uh, I probably pronounced that wrong. Ren says, or Renee, that might be Renee, says she's in Tilleran now. Tilleran, I think that is near San Jose, but I might be wrong because I'm not real, real familiar with Tilleran. So, hey, Give me an update. Let me know if I'm right or wrong. And welcome. So anyway, you know, it, uh, Costa Rica is awesome. It's fun. And uh, I'm excited to be at the next live event in January. I, can, I hope I get to meet all of you there. All right. So, all right. I think I've answered all of the questions and comments as far as getting sick in healthcare. If you have any more, please put them in the chat box. But also... Any other questions about Costa Rica that you're just dying to know about? Because, hey, I'm not scared of any topic. I'll answer anything. And if I know the answer, I'll tell you. If I don't know the answer, I'll make it up. No, I'm teasing. I, I won't lie to you. If I don't know the answer, I'll simply tell you. I don't know. We'll find out. <laughs> so let's take a look at... Uh, Hey, Dale says, well, that's perspective. I believe the public health in Canada is great. Our issue is staff shortage uh, and lots of new residents moving in and it's overwhelming the system as well as the aging population. Hey, Dale, I greatly appreciate you sharing your perspective on it. So Dale likes the public health care system in Canada, but it's a staff shortage. OK, and so, hey, everybody's got a different perspective. I'm so glad you shared that, Dale. So it just all depends on where you're at. You know, from most of the people I talk to, most people don't like it. But, hey, some people do. And you know what? Uh, there's a lot of Costa Ricans that, well, they love their, their, their health system, okay? But, of course, they're very, very poor. But I know Costa Ricans, they're so poor, they don't even pay their caja, and it doesn't even cost much, okay? But something that you do need to know about is that if you employ a Tico, 
If you employ a Tico, you are supposed to be paying their caja. So you better be very, very careful that if you employ a Tico and you don't know about that and you don't pay their caja, if they get mad at you and you're like, oh, no, my Tico workers, they're the best in the world. Uh-uh, they're not the best in the world. Because when they get mad at you, they will sell you out in a heartbeat. And, and they will go to the Social Security office and they will report you and they will say, such and such, it lives at such and such. I've been working for them for a year, six months. I've been working there for three years and they never paid my caja. And dude, you will get in some serious trouble and you will pay that caja because they'll come after you. So it's very important that you know that, okay? Very, very important you know that. All right. What else do we have? Got any other questions? Hey, look, we, we still got a, a, about 20 people on the call, 21 people. Make sure that you hit that like button, subscribe, and look, leave lots of comments. I mean, all of that is just a small, small way that you can support the channel and really support me. And look, just love it if you join our premium members area. Hey, it's only $10 a month, and it's a small way to thank me uh, for, for all this great information that I give you. You know, and it's a great way. I would love for that members area to get to be real huge because then we're helping one another because it's really impossible for me to answer every single question. And while me and my volunteers do a great job trying to answer every question, you know, there's only so much that we can actually do. But I greatly appreciate all of you. And I really appreciate it when you show up for our lives because uh, I like to get input from people and I like to hear your input. I love to hear your perspective because you know what? I can't live in every single place. And I love to hear Rhonda and Michael's perspective. I love to hear your perspective of, of your experience when you're in Costa Rica. And that just benefits everybody. So I just love it when you show up to our live broadcast and you just share with me, you know, your stories. OK. Uh, and tell me, hey, so tell me, uh, you know, Christmas falls on a Sunday. I'm kind of wondering, would anybody show up for a Christmas live? I might be a little bit crazy to even think about it. I'm actually going to be visiting my son and my grandchildren over the Christmas holidays in Louisiana. So if I did a Christmas live, would, would you show up or would you be busy with your family? You know, hey, get, let me know. Put a big old yes in the chat box if you would show up for a Christmas live. We just had a Christmas live and drank some eggnog together. Of course, my eggnog is going to have a little extra apple juice in it. I can guarantee you. <laughs> How about you guys? So let me know. You know, uh, let me know. You put a big old yes in the chat box. Put a big old no in the chat box if you wouldn't show up for a Christmas live. Hey, this is a great, great comment. Thank you so much, Lego. He says, do you feel your health has changed since moving to Costa Rica? Do you feel you eat healthier now? Hey, look, I'm glad you asked that question because absolutely, uh, I've always been a health conscious person. But when I moved to Costa Rica, I was able to easily, easily eat a lot healthier because it was so easy to get fresh fruits and vegetables all over Costa Rica. So bar none, I can tell you that uh, a lot healthier after I moved to Costa Rica. I think a lot has to do with the atmosphere. Lots of clean air. I'm in the mountains. There's no pollution. You know, I'm drinking pure water that comes out of the mountains that have any chemicals in it. And you have to know that I am a health nut. Now, I think I can honestly tell you that the reason I stay healthy is because I exercise a lot. I eat healthy. But the last six months, I've been on this project over here, uh, you know, in Hako, and I've, I've, I have not, I've not been able to eat healthy. I've not been able to exercise. And so I really believe that the reason I've got the gripper now is because I've not been able to eat as healthy as I normally do. Been working way too much, uh, have, have not been eating healthy because I've not have, you know, I'm, I'm, I don't have all of my utensils. I don't have my setup like I do whenever I am at, at home in the mountains, okay? So absolutely, I am 
healthier when I'm at home and I've got all of this set up and I can eat healthy. So absolutely, uh, there's a lot of people that have reported that just within a couple of months of being in Costa Rica, just because of the clean environment, they feel a whole lot better. So yeah, uh, I think I think most people are going to experience that, okay? I see. So, uh, of course, then Rhonda replies back talking about lupus and RA, and uh, she feels like she's in, in a whole lot better shape uh, than when she was uh, in, in uh, where she was at previously. So, hey, I think Costa Rica makes a big, big difference. And I think a lot of people actually, you know, there's a, there's a lot of environmentalists and a lot of people that uh, just really talk about how they feel better being in a cleaner environment, being in the jungle, being in all of that fresh air, it's definitely way better than being in the concrete jungles uh, in the United States, New York, and Las, uh, you know, Las Vegas, uh, Los Angeles, and all those kind of places. Big, 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 big difference, okay? Big, big difference. All right, any other questions before we call it a day? We are closing in on an hour, and uh, I like to try to keep it as short as I can because people will tend to watch them more, okay? And hey, you know, this is a good report uh, that uh, Rhonda says bounced back from a heart attack like it was nothing. And it wasn't any thanks to the care that she received. But after she got home, she was able to manage her own care. And, and a lot of that has to do with the environment she's living in, the clean food, the clean air. So it does make a big, big difference. It really does. Really does. So. All right, folks. Hey, uh, today is December 18th. I probably won't do a live on Christmas, but. I'm sure I'll be busy spending time with the grandkids. And look, I hope you all have an amazing and wonderful Christmas holiday uh, and New Year. And uh, I'm sure that we probably won't have another live. Maybe we will. But if I don't, I hope you have an amazing Christmas and New Year's. And we're going to see you next time. Hey, thank you so much for showing up today. I'll see you on the next live. And I hope to see you at the event in January.